Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to go ahead and talk about a sub $50 Android tablet from Walmart. Also branded by Walmart under the On brand. So without further ado, I'll get to the specs. So this tablet has a 1.3 gigahertz quad-core processor, one gigabyte of RAM, and 16 gigabytes of internal storage. So this tablet has a potato for a camera system. It has two 0 0.3 megapixel cameras on the front and the back. They're both the same and this has a four hour battery life and that's pretty abysmal by today's standards i'm going to be using that word a lot so let's go ahead and get on with it so we are going to move on to the actual unboxing of the, the surf on seven inch tablet so something i forgot to mention this has a seven inch touchscreen display at 1024 by 600 600 pixels so the back we have all the technical information so if you want to pause and read it so then picture of that and then you have all the information top i already opened this so yeah it's a little beat up already so take it out like this and change move the camera so then here it'll focus so we have the ten dollars off your first ebook or audiobook, the basic Walmart, Walmart, um, let's see, Walmart services and coupons. We have a quick start guide, which I still love to see on these modern day electronics, and I like this one because it's pretty, pretty detailed and it tells you just literally how to start off with the, uh, start off with your tablet with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and all that. So put that up to the side. This little plastic bag, we have the actual tablet itself. And the last two things, you have the, I'm glad to say, a USB charging and sync cable. You also have a 120 volt, one amp wall tap. So let's just go ahead and move this out of the way and we'll get on with it. So first impressions of the tablet, I love this design. It's nice and simple, look there's me, hello. I love this design because it's simple. There's like no hardware buttons here. You have your 0 0.3 megapixel front facing camera, your volume rocker, which isn't really a rocker, just two buttons that has the same plastic button. You have your power button and a reset button where you have to stick a small paper clip or a SIM card tool in. You have your um, rear facing 0 0.3 megapixel camera, your speaker and your the logo and your SEC regulations and this backing is, I like this backing. It's a nice texture. Um, it's nice to touch and it doesn't feel like it's gonna wear away like the first three minutes like my Nintendo Switch. So that's the first impressions. So let's move on to the software. So time to move on to the software side of things. So let's go ahead and turn on the power, or power on the tablet, I'm sorry. I should have made a pun there because on, on brand. So you have the new logo, and let me explain this. So it says powered by Android Go Edition. So what this version of Android is, it's basically an optimized version of Android for devices with less than two gigabytes of RAM. Anything with two, two, two gigabytes or more has a regular stock Android. But this is the Go Edition, so it has some of the different apps optimized for the Go Edition and an operating system that's more suited to one gigabyte of RAM as this tablet does. So let us start up. So we are in to the actual operating system. So I've pretty much already set this up, so you all you have to watch is me going through it. So I have to say this is just a buggy mess when it comes to the launcher because this tablet is just not capable of doing anything with it. So we have your clock and then the default wallpaper. So this is just very choppy at times. So here's your app drawer, which is, you just start getting a lot of slowdown when you, whenever you try to do something with a stock Android 9 launcher. So I go ahead and go to one of my downloaded apps, let's say Google Earth. And then you can start seeing the weird slowdowns and low frame, rate, frame rates. Sometimes it's, it's nice and fast, but other times it just 
slow and bogged down. So the solution to the problem is using a custom launcher. In this case, it's Nova Launcher, and this is probably one of my favorite launchers ever because there's so many things you can customize. You customize your app drawer, your icon layout. It also gives you a bunch of widgets. So I've already set it up how I like it. My folder is down here, all my apps up here. So software side of things, once you get something that works like this, you start seeing really fast animations. It's not choppy at all. I don't, I don't even want to keep that on. It's like apps open up a lot quicker this way. There's less delay. So if I open up the app drawer, it's much smoother and there's not a lot of drop frames. So let's go ahead and move on to the performance in apps and gaming. So now for everybody's favorite part, performance and the software with apps and games. So we're just gonna go through a bunch of apps and see how well they respond. But before we do that, I would like to say something about the wallpapers. I think that's pretty much a missed opportunity with their wallpapers because in the previous generation of these tablets, Walmart had custom like their logos, but with custom wallpapers. So here, if I go to wallpapers, they only have one, which is a stock wallpaper. So I just went ahead and added a nice Windows 10 wallpaper because why not? Let's go ahead and set this. So now with the Nova launcher, it's pretty nice and snappy. So first app is going to be Reddit. Let me just adjust the exposure again. Sorry about that. There we go. So this is something that that's pretty snappy. So next app will be Discord. This one takes a little bit longer since it has to get everything. So there is Discord. Oh, let's go to Netflix. So Netflix is loading up. My little thing with like a, a mocked user set. So then here, yeah, stuff like that. So let's go ahead and load up something that I know takes a little bit more, a little bit more. Power. Let's go ahead and switch to landscape. So, gonna raise the volume. So this is this is some dropped frames, and this is running at full resolution. But I'm sure once you watch a little more, it'll get up to at least maybe 480p. But this tablet doesn't do too well with higher resolutions when streaming video. Next up is Spotify, and this is something I have on all my devices to listen to my playlists and stuff like that. So yeah, really snappy, and I could totally see myself listening to this on the bus or in the car, on a long car ride, again, with the exposure. So DeviantArt, something I use pretty much every day. Loads up, pretty much fine. I'm not gonna wait for a load because this that that one does take a little bit. Instagram, which I don't use as much. So yeah, there you go. Pretty snappy. Uh, Google, Google with this version of Android comes with the Google Files app, which I think is good. And with this, I have one of the on branded 32 gigabyte micro SD cards. I got the two pack for eleven dollars, which I think is pretty good for. They're, they're not the best quality, but they're good in a pinch. And I just wanted to go with the on brand here. So I can go ahead and go to one of my videos on the SD card to see one of the higher quality videos. So let's go ahead and do this one. So this is playing pretty well, except this isn't at the full quality that I wanted it to be at. Let's go ahead and close out of the files. Come back into portrait mode. So the next app will be YouTube, or I have installed here for all my basic file needs. So opening up YouTube, this is like really well optimized for this tablet. So I'm gonna 
go ahead and go to my library and go to the same 3D screensaver, the Futuristic City 4K screensaver. Go ahead and go back into landscape. I'm going full screen this, and there's a bunch of drop frames. You can tell just by watching. I'm going to go and lower the tripod for you. So yeah, once it starts, once it plays a little bit, so it's 720p. There's a little bit of drop frames, but overall it's pretty smooth. You could totally get by watching 720p video, maybe even 10, 1080p on this tablet. So that's pretty nice. Closing out of this, we can go ahead and come back portrait mode. So here, Google Earth. This one's a fun one. I use this a lot on all my devices, except for like iPhone 4s because that's annoying. So I'm already in a street view. And I have to say this does does run really well. So let's go ahead and go up, go up to the globe. So I could totally use this when I'm like studying or just wanting to explore. Zooming out to the globe. Very nice and responsive. So you can just go out, click, go in street view and see how that performs. Because I know this does struggle on an original iPad mini that I also own. So, yeah, my big fingers makes it hard to push anything on this tablet. So, but load up. And this actually goes pretty fast, and I like that. So, loads up pretty well. Nice city. Once you load in all the images, it's pretty snappy and responsive, and it looks great on this screen. So, exiting out of Earth, we have Microsoft Solitaire, which is a good time waster, in my opinion. Let's go ahead and lower the tripod once more. This one's like really fast, really responsive. Let's go ahead and go out of fast game. Um, so, I mean, I guess I can just play this. Let's try peaks, remind me later. Just go ahead and classic solitaire. So I'm gonna go ahead and play through a little bit of this and I'll see you then. So you get solid here. So let's go ahead and close up this. This is another one of those really well optimized apps. Let's go ahead and close out of this. Enter portrait mode again. So another thing that's like really, really easy to to use is kegs, which is a nice emulator for the Apple 2GS, which runs really well. Let's go ahead and just. Close our windows, or I can just move it around if I wanted to. This is also a free app, by the way. So if you want to try this out for yourself, it works pretty well, and you can load in your own games and files. And yeah, it's just a 2GS emulator. Pretty cool. So I'm just go ahead. It's kind of finicky. I'm used to a smaller display when using this emulator. So yeah, there you go. So quitting out of this, let's go ahead and try some games. So, first game, let's go ahead and try out Minecraft, and I have installed the beta version, so we can see, I can tell you the frame rate the game is running at. I'm going to go ahead and change the exposure again. So, Minecraft loads up pretty fast. I'm going to test world. So here's where I see some, where it slows down. This is like the same thing problem I have on all Android devices that I have this beta on, where it just hangs and the Android's like, oh, do you want to close the app or something? Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. In this case, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. So yeah, there you go. So we'll just let this load. So I'm going to leave this in real time so you know how fast it actually loads. I mean, it's pretty well optimized, I have to say.
some apps are, some apps aren't. Like Reddit wasn't op wasn't optimized for this type of device, this screen. Really, the screen is the same size as my one of my netbooks, or both of them actually. So we are in Minecraft. Let's go ahead and head to the village, which has a lot going on. And what happens a lot with this touch screen is that it kind of lags behind, and you start getting miss inputs. So we get around four to thirteen frames a second, and when there's like nothing going on whatsoever, we can get around. 36 fps but we never get anywhere above 36 and it's at like the absolutely lowest settings possible with the render distance set to the lowest and no no clouds are rendering no fancy skies no fancy graphics i'm sure with a a, a simple resource pack like a one by one or something like that you can get this running much better than i have here but if you're wanting to play minecraft and in pinch and this is all you had you can get by so, quitting Minecraft, we can go ahead and we can get onto the emulation. So, see you then. In conclusion, I think this is a really good tablet for around $36 if you can get it on sale. It's well worth it. I mean, yeah, it could have been better with the cameras, but then again, it's a, a very cheap tablet. It's good for web surfing, light gaming, streaming, video. In some cases, you just have good Wi-Fi connection. In my case, it's, my, it's kind of garbage at this point in time. But, I mean, it just, it's whatever you want to do with it. I mean, it just depends on what you want to do with it. But I will make another video with emulation because this little thing is a beast. Especially with an Xbox controller and stuff like that. But that's another video. So, there's also a rival, the Amazon Fire 7, which I'll do a review later. If you really want that give us a thumbs up or comment down below any future ideas please subscribe if you want to i'm not forcing you to do that press the like button and click notifications well thank you for watching and have a good night bye